Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and in this Studio Light Volumina Neo review I'm going to show you how to take a portrait like this and turn it into something more like this. Let's go! So here we are in Lumina Neo in the Edit tab and down in the Tools we have the Portrait section and we have Studio Light. So we're going to begin this demonstration by moving our mouse over here and as we do, we can see that we've already got a light source. Now it's not doing very much at the moment because it's in effect not turned on. So to turn it on, I'm going to tick the amount button and I'm going to dial it up to whatever setting that I see fit. So I can go absolutely intense or I can do something much, much more subtle. And as you can see, now my light source is turned on. I can move it around the subject and light the various different parts of her face. So the other thing that we can do is we can color tint our light. So if we're going for something more of a creative effect, we can dial in a hue. So let's say we just go for a red and then dial in our saturation. And then as you can see, our light becomes redder and redder. And once again, we can move our light source around and light in whichever way that we see fit. So for this moment, I'm just going to give my subject a healthy bit of glow and nothing more. Now, we've also got the ability to adjust the depth of our light source. So what that means is as I move this cursor towards the left, What's happening in practical terms is that our light point, our light source, is sort of now behind her head, lighting the back of her head, which is why we can't see anything. But as we bring our depth towards the right, that light source sort of passes her ear and moves towards the front of her face, thus lighting the front of her face nice and clear. I think that Lumina Neo had it sort of right in the beginning, and I'm going to kind of put the light in a sort of central side on position. Now for every light point that we create, and we can create many, we can customize the light. Now by default, this means sort of blind like stripes, and we can adjust the scale of these stripes. And we can adjust the position. So we can adjust the angle and roughly where they light our subject. If stripes aren't for you, you've got dots. And we also have various different textures. You can add your own texture. Or you can use some of the various ones that come packaged with the product. So let's forget about light customization for a moment. And what I'm going to do is adjust some of these global settings. So what global settings are, these are basically independent of the individual light sources that we put in. And if I dial down brightness, it's going to affect sort of the entire image. Smoothing just sort of smooths away the light. So you just sort of move this around until you like what you see. If you push it to the extremes, we get some pretty strange effects. But with a delicate touch, it can clean things up a little bit. And we also have light contrast, which is going to sort of increase the gap between our brightest and darkest parts of our image. So this is useful if you kind of want to go for that sort of floating head look. So at the moment, our image is kind of not looking quite as I would like it. So what I'm going to do is clicking a brand new light source. And I'm going to try and sort of even out the lighting a bit. So now I've got one on either side of my subject. I'm going to try and dial this one back. I'm going to remove the color from the previous light. So I've got two nice white lights either side of the subject. And I'm also going to drop one below. Now I'm not going to go for perfection here because you might get bored watching that. But what I'm going to do is get something close enough just to kind of give you an idea how to use this and whether or not 
it's for you. So at the moment, that's looking pretty good. Now I want to remind you just how far we've come. So if we click on the sort of disabling feature, we can go back to what it looked like when we began and what it looks like now. Now, I very much like Studio Lite. I really can't find much wrong with it. It's, it's easy to use. It's fast and responsive. You're watching a real-time demo here. Um, the only downside with Studio Lite is it doesn't just come with Luminar Neo. It is its own feature and comes with the Creative Journey Pack, which includes Studio Lite and a few other applications. So if you've already bought Luminar Neo and the Luminar Neo Extension Pack, this is going to be a further expense. If you have not bought any of that just yet, I would strongly recommend that you consider Luminar Neo Pro subscription because not only will you get Studio Lite for about $10 roughly a month, depending on which option you choose, but you'll also get all seven Luminar Neo extensions and of course Luminar Neo itself. It's by far the cheapest way of doing it and whatever new features comes down the road, in the future, you will also get those inclusive within your subscription. So anyway, I hope that was useful. There's some links in the description below if you want to give this a go for yourself. Um, but otherwise, uh, my name is Richard from Silent Peak, and I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.